formed a react based form library that I've been working on for a couple years. Um, we're just going to go over all the ins and outs and all the cool new features that you can use. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. So um, there is a readme file with some examples on the NPM um, uh, repository itself. But I would suggest going to the live examples code and docs for more extensive storybook documentation. Um, so let's go ahead and dive in here. You can see that you simply npm install it, and then you can right out of the box uh, start using it. So uh, out of the box, you have a form and some input uh, components that are exported from the form. If you were to render those uh, under the hood, they're rendering default um, DOM elements. So an input renders an input DOM element, a select renders and a select element, text area, checkbox, so on and so forth. Um, and you can see that uh, they're already uh, hooked up to uh, informed such that you can do all sorts of cool things. So your first thing you'll note is that there's a required field on every input called field. In this case, this is the name field, the age field, home field, the car field, the married field. Uh, one cool thing is that it comes shipped with a relevant component, uh, which basically passes you the entire state of the form and you can check to see if you're married, whether or not to render that input. Um, so if I go down here and I select married, you can see that the spouse field shows up. If I go ahead and type in there, you can see it shows up in the values on the right. If I uncheck it, that value will go away. Um, uh, you can see that every single input is tracked by um, the name field or the field property, uh, which maps to uh, directly to the values, the errors and the touched. Um, you can see that if I go ahead and hit submit, you're going to get an error saying that age is required. If you go and look at that, that's because on the age uh, field, I passed a required parameter. Um, if I look at the first input, I can see that there is a placeholder, and that just got passed to the native DOM element. Um, I can see that on the phone input, um, I passed a formatter. So if I go ahead and type in the phone input, you can see that that actually um, formatted the number input for me based on a simple string value. Um, the select input has an initial value of model s selected and that's why it pre-populated with model s. Uh, if I had passed another uh, value it would have pre-populated with that instead. Um, and then at the bottom you can see that I render a form state component and that's just helpful for debugging which is in turn rendering this uh, which is basically a code in a pre-tag with a JSON stringified state. Um, so that's all cool, and there's a lot more features you can do with the out-of-the-box inputs, but what if I wanted to create my own fields? So more often than not, i.e. probably like 90% of the time, you're not going to use the inputs out of the box, you're going to create your own. To do that, it's this simple. You import the hook, use form, and use field. So by importing those things, you can then build your custom components. Step one, let's build our custom form component. We're going to go ahead and call the use form uh, hook and pass in the props from the form component. That's going to give us the form controller and the uh, render function and the user props, the things that you want to end up on the DOM element itself. We're going to spread those props, hook up the on submit, render the children. We've now built our form component. We're done. Next, we're going to build our inputs. In this case, we built the input checkbox and select. All you do, call use field, pass in your props, tell it what type of input it's going to be, and then it's going to give you a default handler called informed, which you can spread onto your input, and then a render function for optimized rendering. Simple, you build these three things, and then you can use those for the exact same form that we saw above. Uh, one cool thing, if I open up the uh, console here, is you can see that if I hit submit, if I go to console, and I hit submit, you'll notice that nothing got logged in the console, but in the code, we passed an on submit to the form to log to the console. So why did it not log? It didn't log because by default informed will prevent the form from submitting if there are any errors. In this case, we only require the age field, right? So if I said my age here, um, then I try submitting, you can see that we got a console log with the values uh, age 26 car model S because of our initial value. Um, so let's go start looking at some of the other cool features uh, with this. Obviously, we have all of our different inputs um, out of the box, but I showed you how to create the custom ones. Um, if you want to uh, use array fields, you can actually go ahead and do that. So in this case, um, I have 
um, an array field. If I go down to the code, you can see this field is called siblings. Uh, it gives you an add and reset button amongst some other things. So what I did is I said, let me create a button, hook it up to the add. Let me create another button, hook it up to the reset. Let me create an array field here, um, which is siblings, where each item has a remove, a field, and an index, right? So just for fun, I logged, I rendered out the index, I set the field name here, and I added the remove button. So if you look, you can see that siblings is an array with foobar and vas. It's that because I happen to pass in initial values of foobar and vas. If I remove bar, which is between foo and vas, you can see that it actually got removed from the array there. If I add another value back, you can see that that is now the third element. And if I click the reset button, you can see that siblings was reset to its initial value. So that's pretty simple and pretty straightforward for array fields. But in this case, each element in the array field is a string. What if I wanted each element in the array field to be an object? Well, I can do that as well. If I take a look at this, where I have these two friends, Joe and Jane. Joe and Jane are both uh, objects in the array. Um, I can go ahead and type some stuff here. I can reset just Joe. I can set Joe's name to Elon. I can remove Joe. And then I can reset the entire array field, right? So there's all sorts of things there. And also I can even track the substate of each array field. So when I type in here, you can see that it updates the substate as well as the main state on the right. Um, and to do that, it's pretty simple. Um, in this case, we created some initial values. We passed it to the form. Um, we created an array field just like we did before. But instead of just passing in field to the, uh, to the text inputs, we did fields.age and field.name um, using string interpolation here. Um, so that's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, what about validation? Well, there's simple validation at the field level, right? So in this case, when I hit submit, each one of these things must be at least five characters because I created a custom validation function and I passed it into the field. Now by default, that's only going to happen on submit. So if I refresh this page and I go ahead and type and blur these fields, you can see that it was not validated, right? If I type less than five characters, it's not validated until I click submit. But if I want to control that, I can simply do that by passing in props. In this case, this uh, is the same exact validation function as before. You can see that it's, there's no errors. When I blur away, it validated. On the second field, you can see the second I typed, it started validating. And once I get past that five character mark, that validation goes away. So that's on change. I can also do validate on change and blur and that third field will do it on both. That's simply achieved by passing validate on blur, validate on change, uh, and validate on blur and validate on change to the inputs. Um, additionally, you can do form level validation. Here's a case where I wanna pass in a validate function to the form itself. Um, you can see that basically I return an error for each one of the values in the field in the form. Um, for optimization, Every field only validates if it is changed, but then that causes problems when you have two fields that are associated. So in this case, I have two fields that are associated, password and confirm password. If I were to type in one, you can see that this says passwords must match, and this says passwords must be at least five characters. If I type hello in that field, you can see that the passwords now match. Well, how did the two fields know about each other? Well, they know it about each other because the fields can accept a notified prop basically to say, hey, when the, the uh, password field changes, make sure you notify the confirm password field. And when the confirm password field changes, you notify the password field. So that's pretty straightforward, pretty simple, um, and pretty powerful because it really optimizes the rendering of this library. Additionally, you can validate array fields. Uh, I won't go into all those details right now. Um, you can perform yup validation, which is simple by passing in a validation schema. Uh, generated from yup. Um, so if I submit this, you can see that those are required because they failed the yup schema validation. Um, you can also do field level yup validation, where in this case, I created a sub uh, yup validation here just for a string field and passed it in just for this last name field. Um, there is also built in support for asynchronous validation, uh, which I won't go into too many details for that. But if I type in Billy, which is a um, already taken username, 
Uh, it will say it was submitting and validating, and then it will eventually tell me that the username is taken. Um, an additional validation. There's also schema-based form rendering. So in this case, you can take true pure JSON schema, which can be stored in a database, um, and then you can use that to render out your form. And additionally, you can even validate using schema. So if I go to validation again, and I pop down to JSON schema plus rendering, this JSON schema object, which again is pure JSON schema, along with the AJV validator is passed into the form. And then when I click this submit button, you can actually see that I have a bunch of errors that came from actual JSON schema validation. Um, so that's cool if you happen to be building lots of forms and you have your forms definitions stored in a database in JSON. Um, so that's JSON schema. There's a lot more to JSON schema here, um, but I won't go into all those details now. Um, Formatting is really cool. Um, there's a mask function. In this case, it's uppercasing. That was a bad example. Uppercasing all the letters that I'm typing. Um, the formatter is very cool. Basically, you can see that as I type numbers in here, it's adding the dashes and the plus one at the beginning, but I want it to parse it back to the true values that were typed. So in that case, I passed a formatter and I passed a parser here. Um, there's a bunch of hooks. In this case, I have a form. I have a component using the form API right here. I called use form API to get the form API, and then I can use that to create a button to set the value of the name field to a random number. So if I go ahead and click this random number button, I'm setting the value of that value of that field using um, the API itself. Um, the use form state will give me access to the form state. So same component you saw before. This time I'm just rendering a pre-tag with uh, json.stringified state here. Um, I can grab an API for a specific field. So in this case, instead of grabbing the entire form API, I grab the API for just the name field. Same example, uh, different hook. Um, I can use a specific field state. In this case, I'm just stringifying out the value of the name field and nothing else here, right? That's why you see value in touched here. Um, use array field, you can use that as well. Um, if you didn't want to use the internal array component, um, use form, uh, you've seen before, that's how you create uh, your custom form. Uh, and use field is how you create uh, custom inputs, which if you're curious of how to create custom inputs, I would just go to the custom inputs section in the docs, and you can see that it's this simple. Uh, before I showed you spreading the informed default handler, but if you have to hook it up in various ways that are custom and unique to you, you can basically get the field API and the field state. You can use the set touched and set value to determine what happens when you change and when you blur. You can also use the state to render out uh, some red text when there's an error. So in this case, when I hit submit, I have some red text because I built my own custom input using uh, the field hook. Um, another really cool feature is multi-step forms. So in this case, you can see when I hit next, it said that I have an error that this field is required. Um, it did not proceed to the next uh, phase until I actually put some text in there. Then it allowed me to go. If I'm allergic to peanut butter, I hit the checkbox. I hit next. It then asks me if I have an EpiPen. I can hit yes, right? You can see that value in the values. If I hit back and I uncheck that, well, in that case, the EpiPen question becomes irrelevant. So if I hit next, you can actually see that instead of going to the EpiPen question, it went to the question saying, what's my favorite color, right? So I can go ahead and type that, hit next. And additionally, you can even have relevant fields within a multi-step. So in this case, if I say I have a dog named Rex, and I go back, you can see it maintained the dog name Rex, right? Because it was relevant. But if I hit next and I uncheck that, you can see that it actually cleaned up after itself and got rid of the Rex because Rex, the name of the dog, is no longer relevant because I didn't say that I had a dog. Um, and then you can also jump to the different steps yourself. Um, so that's really cool. That's multi-step forms, and it's this simple. Um, you have uh, each uh, element basically uses the multi-step API. You get a next function, you get a back function, um, and then you can actually say uh, what the next, um, what's the next step depending on your values. In this case, if I'm allergic, I said the next step is EpiPen, otherwise it's color. Um, and then you can even have whether or not the, uh, the field is relevant. In this case, I said this step is not relevant if I'm not allergic to peanut butter. Um, so this step will not even show up and it will skip right to the color step. Um, 
So it's pretty straightforward and pretty readable. Um, those are the buttons to jump around to the different uh, steps. And in the end, this is your JSX, which each one of your steps is here. Um, and then I've kind of showed you this before, but I'll go over it again. Uh, we do give you this relevant component, which allows you to uh, conditionally render stuff, um, whether or not, in this case, you are married or not. Um, so that's kind of a high-level overview of a lot of the features in this library. Um, you know, I'd love for you to go check it out. Um, it's heavily tested. It's easy to test. It's all pretty much synchronous internally, um, and it's really, really fun to write forms. So, um, yeah, have fun and enjoy.